Ever since the introduction of the mid-sized luxury sedan, the design has kind of stayed the same. You've got a hood, a cabin, and a trunk. This is what designers call a three-box design. Cars like the 5 Series BMW, the E-Class from Mercedes, and the Audi A6 all use this three-box design. There have been recent changes to the tried-and-true sedan to make them more appealing, like taking the silhouette of a coupe and grafting it onto a four-door car, with vehicles like the Mercedes CLS, the Passat CC, and the Hyundai Sonata, basically taking a sedan and smoothing it out. Now there's even a newer trend, to add a hatch. The BMW 550 GT, and most notably, the Porsche Panamera have turned the luxury sedan into something completely unique. Well, this is the all-new Audi A7, a car that's been able to combine all three. You've got a luxury sedan with a coupe silhouette and now a hatch that makes access to the back even easier. This Audi A7 is built off the same platform as the new Audi A6. It's kind of like getting a Porsche Panamera on the cheap. But don't be confused. The A7 and the Panamera have nothing in common. They don't share common architecture. The regular sedan is going to be fading away as people don't want to be limited by that traditional three-box design. This is the answer. The A7 has a very well-hidden hatch in the design, but once open, it reveals a large space, only limited by the rake of the rear window. The back seats fold for more room and there is a ski bag for tidier transport. When closed, it's hard to tell there's a hatch at all. Just like the Panamera, there's a rear spoiler that's deployed at speeds over 130 kilometers an hour and drops down at speeds below 80 kilometers an hour, or it can be manually operated. Well, the inside of the Audi A7 is a rolling showcase of luxury and refinement, everything we've come to expect from Audi. Now, front and literally center is this screen, the Multimedia Interface, or MMI, from Audi. And this pop-out screen and the whole architecture of the inside is very similar to the new Audi A8. One of the most unique wood applications is the oak trim that has a matte finish showing the grain and texture of the wood. The center console also has a new touchpad for preset radio stations, but it also lets the driver enter the address in the navigation by simply swiping letters onto the pad. The MMI or Multimedia Interface System is, in my opinion, the best computer system in the business today because it's so intuitive and simple to use. Just spend a day with this car and you've got it mastered. Now, just like a coupe, there's no window frames. That gives it a kind of a sexy look. Now, back seat space, headroom definitely is at a bit of a premium. Legroom seems okay, but not nearly the ample space you get in a Porsche Panamera. That is absolutely massive in the back. But just like the Panamera, it's only a four-seater car. There's no seat in the back. So if you're somebody that takes extra kids to soccer practice, you don't want an Audi A7, you want an Audi Q7. Now, as I mentioned, the Audi A7 and the Porsche Panamera have similarities in design and the approach to the way they look, but that's really where the similarity ends. As automakers have had to improve their fuel efficiency to meet tougher regulations and customers demanding more from each tank of fuel, the era of the V8 is slowly fading. This car is a supercharged 3-liter V6 with 310 horsepower and 315 foot-pounds of torque. That's more than BMW's 535. The power comes on with a whoosh that is so relaxing and effortless that you'll never miss a V8 engine. It pulls from lights with ease and is a brute on the highway. Really an amazing engine. How's this? Zero to 100 kilometers an hour in just 5.4 seconds. That's nice, but that's not all. Now, Audi also has an optional system called Drive Select, literally just that. You can select the kind of drive that you want. You can drill into the car settings, you can have comfort, you can have an automatic setting that changes depending on the road conditions, and also dynamic. But what I like is individual. You might want the steering to be heavier and the throttle to be lighter and the suspension to be softer or any combination of those. The only problem is when you get the steering into the dynamic or stiffer setting, it can feel a little bit artificial, almost like it's too heavy on purpose. But it is a cool system and worth the extra money. There's an optional package that provides added safety and convenience for things like blind spot warning, crash avoidance, and adaptive cruise control. This allows the car to creep in traffic without the driver going back and forth from the gas to the brake. And you gotta admit, that's pretty handy. 
I've been saying it for quite a while. I believe the days of the traditional sedan are fading away. You just have to look at vehicles like the new BMW X1 that takes a BMW 3 Series and a crossover and mashes them together. It starts at just over $68,000. So it's a good looking date and it's a cheaper date. That's a win-win. How does the A7 stack up to its competitors? See all the reviews at drivingtelevision.com.